care to go to. Hey guys, can you guys hear me? Hey guys, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes we can. Awesome, okay, cool. How are you Armando? Good, still working, but I'm thank glad you to for be coming. Here. Yeah, thanks yeah. For, for joining. I see Andrew, Graciela, Brady. I'm just gonna wait for a few more people to jump on. And in the meantime, I will share my screen and pull up this webinar. I'm gonna mute myself and let me know if you need. Okay, yeah. I think at some point we'll have everybody introduce themselves. Um, I think I'll have one of my team members help me out with the with the group chat so that we can all share our social media handles and our contact information on the group chat that way we can all connect. Hi, Graciela. I don't think we've met before. Thanks for coming. Hi. Sorry. No, we haven't met before. <laughs> I may have to hop off. I'm still kind of working, so I'm going to have to hop off a little no bit. No worries. I'm going to record this and I'm going to send it out and I'm going to email it to everybody who didn't join um, or wasn't able to. Um, let me see. We have Steph coming in. This is my awesome. Team. Thank you. No, oh, thank you. Hey, Seth, how are you? Hey, how are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm going to see if Maria, if you can check in with Maria and Rosie and see where they're at, see if they can come in. Okay, we'll do. Started in like a minute or two, just waiting for a few more people to hop on. Armando, do you know if I can co-host somebody so, so Steph or Maria can help me bring up people or admit people in? Um, you probably have to go to the Zoom setting and um, add them as a alternative host. You wanna change, oh, okay. Well, that's okay. I'll just keep an eye out here. But, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to get started because, like I said, it's going to be recorded anyway. So as people are coming in, I'll just have people, you know, admitted. And that'll kind of throw me off at times, but it's okay. You guys can see me, right? I can't see myself. Cool. So I'll give a little backstory. First of all, thank you guys for coming. This is my first ADU um, webinar, and I'll be doing these once a month. And this is a very, very basic, basic introduction to what an ADU is. Um, and it applies to realtors, sellers, investors, um, really anybody, right, in, in real estate who's looking to implement the strategy. So a quick backstory on me, I started in real estate 10 years ago. I started off as a receptionist, then worked my way up to um, marketing director, then became um, part of the recruiting department. So I would recruit realtors. I then um, started managing uh, teams, real estate teams. And now I have my own team uh, and they're here today, Maria, um, Stephanie, and Rosie should be popping in real soon. But yeah, Hello. that's my team. Hey guys. And, um, you know, once I, I started tapping into the ADU space, which was about two years ago, I started because a lot of my clients were asking, as I was working with a lot of buyers at the time, and a lot of these buyers were asking me, well, what can I do with this backyard? What can I do with this garage? You know, because due to the housing shortage, it was very difficult to get them, you know, offers accepted or to even find inventory to submit offers on. So we had to get creative with the space, but I felt like I lacked the knowledge, right? ADU was a new term and it's a new thing that, that it's not a new thing, it's a new term. And, um, you know, we're gonna talk about what it really is and simplify it for everybody. But that's a little backstory on how I got started in the ADU space, it was more of like, it was a demand that I saw and I figured, okay, well, if I educate myself in this process, 
I can implement it for myself and my own investments. And I can also help people along the way, right? Because I feel like the more I tap into the ADU space and the more I learn about it, the more I realize it's a lot of just lack of knowledge and a lot of people don't know what they don't know, right? So today we'll talk about that. And um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, you guys can also add your IG in the chat room and introduce yourself. I want everybody to connect, but I know that we're limited <laughs> to the time as well. So I'm not gonna go through intros for everybody because that'll keep us here for another 30 minutes, but feel free to use the chat and connect with each other on the back end and um, we're gonna get started. So topic that we'll be talking about today. We're gonna talk about what an ADU is, what types of different ADUs there are, um, we're going to go over a case study with the client who we're currently helping and um, how we came about, you know, coming up with the strategy and helping her set up her game plan. And um, we're also going to talk about how to implement the ADU strategy. And you, once, you know, the purpose of this, of this uh, webinar is so that once you're, you're more familiar with the ADU process, you look at properties a very different way. And, you know, Andrew will tell you he's very... Um, knowledgeable and I learned a lot from him. He's, um, once you start looking at the properties from an ADU perspective, you can't go back. <laughs> you start looking at them with the potential everywhere you go. So you'll see these opportunities. And I'm hoping that after this um, webinar, you guys can see that opportunity. We'll talk about financing, some of the things that I've seen you know, with clients. Again, I'm only speaking from experience and I want you guys to verify all of this information as well. But as far as financing, what are some of the financing options that some of my clients are using? We'll talk a little bit about that. Why? Why I talk about the ADU strategy so much and why I'm such a big advocate of it. And then lastly, uh, things to consider or look into, right? Uh, because my, my specialty is a realtor. So I'm a realtor. So I'm going to bring the realtor's perspective. And I'm also going to bring that value proposition. As a realtor, how can I help you guys? you know, implement this, this ADU strategy and connect you with the right team. Any questions before I start, guys? Okay, let's take that as a no. Time. I can't see all of you guys. Let me start off the screen here, just in case. And thank you guys for everybody else who's joining in. I'm just, Rosie's coming in now. Awesome. All right, so we'll get straight to it. So what is an ADU? So an ADU is a secondary housing on a single family residence lot. And the term came about, I wanna say like three, four years ago, um, but really it's been around for years. Uh, we've been using it and we've just been calling it different things. You know, it can be a rumpus room, it can be a casita, it can be a back house, it can be, um, you know, the granny flats. There's so many different terms. But that's in a nutshell, basically what an ADU is. And so why are they so popular? They're very popular, especially here in LA County, Riverside County, San Diego County, because of the housing shortage, meaning there aren't enough homes. When I'm showing property for every house that's on the market, there's 20, 30, 40 buyers lined up. So just to give an idea of the lack of inventory. So then with the inventory that there is out there, prices are out the roof, right? An average sales price and an average mortgage payment for somebody here in LA who's looking to buy is going to pay somewhere around 3000 to 3500 That's what their mortgage payment will look like, assuming they come in with very little money down. And even in 20% options, you'd be surprised. The payments are ridiculously high. So going back to the creativeness of how I started in, in, in the ADU space was, well, if your payment's 3000 and your budget is 2000 how can we get creative here? Well, we can convert existing space, right? Or add additional space and then rent it out. And cities like LA will, they have a program now that, you know, they, they'll pay for a one bedroom, a two bedroom, or even a three bedroom ADU. And they have set standard rentals on what they would pay you for these units. Um, you can rent it out to, you know, a family friend. You can have your mother move in in the back. And we'll talk about the different types of ADUs. But I'm just trying to give you guys an overall view as to why they're so popular, why we're going to dive into it, and um, why I think everybody should be doing it. Okay. So we're going to go on to the next slide. Sorry, guys. 
So different types of ADUs. Um, there are, you know, a few several ones, but I will talk about the main common ones here um, in LA. You've got a junior ADU, which is something under 500 square feet. So this can be a detached garage. It can be, a, a, sorry, it can be an attached uh, garage. It can be um, like a master bedroom, be master bathroom that you're looking to convert. Um, a detached ADU, so obviously detached to the property. Um, an ADU, just a, a, a regular ADU. And then you have your GADU, which is a garage ADU. And those are very popular here. You also have like basement conversions, but I didn't include it here because we, I haven't really seen a lot here in LA. I have friends that are, I have one realtor friend, she's out in Oakland and they, they do a lot of basement ADUs. Those are very popular in some other areas. So um, those are the, the four types of ADUs. And when you go see a property, if you guys are looking to buy or if you're looking to sell, think of ways that you can add forced appreciation and one of the ways is by adding an ADU. And one of the ways to help you offset that, that high rental or mortgage payment is by renting it out too, right? You wanna look at those options. And that's something that I bring to the table as a realtor because I have access to comps, right? We wanna look at comparables. Anything within half a mile from the property, from the subject property is what an appraiser is gonna look at. Anything that's sold within the last 30 days, you could pretty much you know, get a good gauge as to how much your property would be worth after you know, doing these conversions and additions. So you wanna definitely have a realtor as part of your team. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about a few different examples, but in a nutshell, those are some of the, the ADU projects that I've seen from clients. You know, we'll talk about Stephanie, who is my case study. And Stephanie, let me see if I can see her picture. I didn't get a chance to add her picture. But you, if you guys see on my Instagram, I share my entire journey on Instagram and I have the tab here open because I'll go over that and I'll kind of cross-reference the, informa the information that I put on Instagram and how I came about with that info, you know, just to give you guys a little backstory and more context. So Stephanie, um, her name's also Stephanie. She's a client of mine who I met at an open house a few years back. She bought a three bedroom, two bath in Wilmington with a detached garage and the detached garage had a storage that was also permitted. It was like another 250 square feet for that additional storage, uh, which was permitted. And so uh, fast forward two years later, um, she called me that, you know, at last year and said, hey, I'm thinking of converting my garage. So um, that detached garage, she decided to convert into a two bedroom, one bath. The master bedroom, the, the front main unit was a three bedroom, two bath. So she was gonna, convert uh, the master bedroom and master bathroom into a junior ADU. Remember the junior ADU is attached to the home and it's a smaller unit. Um, so, and then the, the front unit is now gonna go from a three bedroom, two baths to a two bedroom, one bath, right? And then the goal is for her to rent out the garage, refinance the property, get it reevaluated and repeat the process and then move on to Lakewood where is uh, really where she wants to be, right? And so that's just a, one example of how powerful this strategy is, right? She's taking her SFR, meaning her single family residence into a triplex. That's why I put the caption um, SFR to triplex real quick, because these um, units also have their own address. They operate as its own independent unit. You have the, you know, the option to split utilities, which can bring additional costs, but the options are there, right? And so. She literally took this SFR, converted it into a, a triplex, and she's gonna rent out the back, the, the garage, the detached garage for, I don't know, 22 to 2,500. The junior ADU, she can rent out for 12 to 1,800. I mean, rents are ridiculous here. And the front unit will be rented out for about the same as the garage, the detached garage, you know, another 22, 2,500. And her payment is about 3,000, 2,800 to be exact. So she has cash flow. And as you have cash flow, you also are building equity, right? And then after you do the, the process, you want to get your property refinanced so that you have an appraiser come out, reevaluate the property, you cash out or you refinance into a lower payment, get more cash flow, and you're also building equity along the way, right? So this is a strategy that you can add to your BRRRR strategies. If you guys are familiar with what a BRRRR is, is 
you buy a property, you rent it out, you renovate it, you rent it out, you refinance it, and then you repeat the process. So you can do all of that and incorporate the ADU. So when you're looking at properties, just look at, look at them for the potential that it has. Because we're in such a shortage of inventory, you're not going to find your ideal home. I get a lot of people that say, well, I want a three bed, two bath under 650 or 700 in Long Beach. You're not going to find that. But what you can find is a two bedroom, one bath with a decent lot size, where maybe you can add that third bedroom, or maybe you can convert that, that garage or you know that bonus room or whatever the case may be. So we've got to get creative with the space and the situation that we're in, and which is why I think this, this play is so powerful. So any questions so far on the case study? I'm going to go into um, the different reasons why you can why you should um, use or add an ADU to your property, and um, and then kind of give you guys examples on you know why this play is good for realtors, investors, buyers, anybody. Any questions? Gwen, yes. Hi, Stephanie. Um, so I was in, a, it, okay, so this particular uh, SFR to triplex you're talking about, is are there any special concessions if you want to have two ADUs? I, I, I didn't realize you could do two ADUs on one, on one property. So where you're at, you're in the Bay Area, and I know you're also in a coastal zone, so you have to just double check those things. But for the most part here in, in LA, I know that you can build two ADUs. Like for this for this um, example, <clears throat> um, she she didn't add two. She she added she converted two things, right? She didn't really add, but it really just depends on your local and state um, ordinances. And so I I would double check. But yeah, for the most part, there aren't like zoning requirements. But um, you you definitely want to check in your area. And I have Armando who's here who can help you with that too if you have any questions. Because I fact check everything with him. And um, I'll, I have some websites that he can help you with too, which is housable.com. You can verify things like that on there. But good question. Thank you. Uh, and, and the point that you made that she converted versus building from the ground up, that probably makes a difference. So, okay, awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I would assume that it would make a, a huge difference. Yeah, for sure. Cool. All right, guys. So I'm going to go into why or how, sorry, how you can implement this strategy. So as a realtor, you know, um, I've discovered that along the way, by learning about ADUs has opened up my mindset to implementing the strategy for myself and my kid and having that leverage um, cash flow and benefit really from, from this play to create that generational wealth, you know, and I see the opportunity everywhere now. So I try to educate realtors as well to think outside the box and look at this as an opportunity for themselves too, right? Sometimes we're too busy chasing the next deal for our clients, but it's nice to actually take a step back and identify these properties that could take us out of that rat race right, or working deal to deal, escrow to escrow, commission to commission. Um, so I, I try to emphasize it and bring awareness because a lot of realtors don't know what they don't know. And I didn't know about the ADU process at all at one point. And there's nobody that's going to teach you. You have to learn it on your own or you got to connect with people, you know, get into mastermind sessions with people that are in the business. That's kind of how I squeeze my way into it by vetting certain contractors, you know, connecting with certain people that will teach me this stuff and will give me the time of day. So definitely educate yourself. Knowledge is power, but this play is also for realtors. It's not just for clients, you know, think about it for yourself as well. And if you guys need help with that, you know, let me know. Um, the ADU play is also for buyers and investors. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you're looking to do the birth strategy, if you're flipping and you're looking to renovate a property and then, you know, do a flip, add this to your numbers and your bottom line. I guarantee that it's going to make a lot of sense and you're going to start wanting to do this every single time because, you know, you can um, create equity. And um, if you have that 30 percent margin already, even better. This is just like the cherry on top. If you're a buyer who's looking to buy your first property, maybe it's your primary residence or it's your investment, whatever the case may be, 
look at it from the ADU perspective and the ADU lens. How can I add more value to this property? Highest and best use. How can I um, offset my, my mortgage and get help with that? You know, because prices here are ridiculous. And then be realistic with what you can find depending on your budget. Most people here are, the average sales price in Long Beach is 730,000 now. So if you're looking, everybody's looking for a house between 650 to 750, you know, 800. And even in the million dollar range, don't get me wrong, it's very competitive too. But this is one way to say, okay, well, if I was looking for a house under 650, now maybe I'm okay with looking at a house at 700 because I know that there's value in the property. I know that I can do this and that and add and convert and the numbers make sense, right? Before you buy the home. So, and it opens up your opportunities because now you're looking at homes a very different way than you were initially. Now for sellers or homeowners in general, um, with sellers, when I'm meeting with them at the property and they're looking to sell the property, uh, everybody wants highest and best, right? And um, one of the ways to maximize that is by possibly like selling the house ADU approved, meaning you go through the process yourself of, of getting the, the plans and permits approved and submitted so that you can sell it at a premium because buyers will pay for that. And a lot of people, if I have realtors here in the room, you guys know that what a buyer is looking for is the last thing they want to do is have to deal with the city and go to the city and deal with plans and permits. They think that it's like a, this big old headache and you know it's, it's not worth their time. So the last thing they want to do is that. Now, if you market the property saying it's ADU approved, call so-and-so and get a quote from them or for any more questions, verify with them, you know, whoever that GC is or builder or architect, whoever from your team, you can add that to the listing. And now if you are thinking, let's say you spend between 10 to 15,000 on plans and permits, and you're gonna, you were thinking of selling it for 600,000. Well, now with plans and permits, you can now sell it for probably 650 easily. Somebody would come and pay. Why? Because it's ADU already, it's ADU approved. You've saved the buyer the time to get it approved, however long that takes. And it can take somewhere between three, you know, one month to three months, sometimes even longer. It really just depends. So then you also want to take into consideration the time frame. If you're in a rush to sell, this isn't for you, right? If, if you may not want to look at that option. If, if you're willing to wait, then I, I would suggest that's another creative way to get more for your property. And if you really have the time, right? And usually when I have this conversation with sellers, they don't even want to sell it anymore. Because <laughs> after I tell them, look, you can sell it with plans and permits, or you can sell it ready to go with the build out, everything ready, and you sell it with a whole brand new ADU. By that time, they're like, okay, well, after running the numbers, I don't want to sell it. I'd rather just keep it, you know, and I'm totally okay with that too. Like, I think that that's great if people are looking at it from that perspective, because then it's like, okay, let's talk about keeping it, running it out, refinancing, and then let's go buy another one. Let's cash out after you refinance it and get it reevaluated. Let's cash out, put that money elsewhere and rinse and repeat. That, does that make sense? Any questions so far? Cool. Awesome. Okay, guys. So some of the reasons why people build ADUs, aside from all the cool things that I just mentioned, is I see a lot of people doing creative spaces, you know, either that extra office, um, that, you know, that bonus room, just that 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 room for the older son who doesn't want to live with the parents anymore, you know, like the, the, the creative space, we want to call it. You also have like the boomerang child, like I said, people want to have that 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 older kid live in the back who wants to be independent all of a sudden or that family member um, or that mother, you know, um, also a home upgrade. Let's say that you want to live in the back house and rent out the front you know, and, and live in the back that you're going to add because it's a newer built. And so it might be, you know, functionality might be better. And just the amenities that you're having with a brand new place, you may want to live back there and rent out the front unit, right? These are some options. And I posted these on my Instagram. So a lot of what I'm going over today, I literally kind of cross reference here. Um, I like to share the journey and share these ideas. So here I've put, I've laid out some of those examples 
you know. Um, I think it was further down. Yeah, right here, ADU Tip Tuesday in that post. That's where I went over these different scenarios and how people are um, using the creative space, you know, of an ADU. Uh, like I mentioned, a granny shack, a lot of, you know, older parents that don't want to live on their own or the, or the kids don't want them on their own and they're willing to convert that garage and, you know, have the, the grandmother or the grandparents live back there. That's a very common one. The rental. You know, that's a very popular one. And um, I want to say that the granny shack and the rental are the most popular ones. Because like I said, the rental is to offset that, that mortgage payment that everybody's dealing with right now. It, it, it is what it is. Because even with the rates being low, the, the housing shortage is crazy. And because people see the ADU potential, that's why they, they're, they're willing to offer even more, which creates even more competition, right? But yeah, these are some of, the, some of the examples of how people are using these ADU spaces. So it's not just a rental or a granny shack. You can, you know, there's multiple purposes for it. You, you can do whatever you want, pretty much. Obviously you can't do um, things like short-term rental um, yet. I'm hoping, I really am praying that they make some changes there, but if not, you know, um, there are a few other things that you may wanna consider before building. Timeline of events. So what I've seen, again, just based on what I've seen, a lot of these projects are taking between six to nine months, if not longer. I recently went to go visit one of the ADU West Coast projects and they did a garage conversion, which took 11 months. And that was here in Long Beach. So it's case by case, you know, but I like to set realistic expectations. So I don't think anything under six months would be realistic. Um, even six months, it really just depends on your county. Um, but six to nine months is what I'm seeing, you know, as far as timeline goes. Now, the main question, and I like to reference this to real estate because I'm a realtor. So I like to explain it like when you're getting ready to buy a house or even sell a house and move into another one your first step should be to figure out what type of financing you're gonna be using, because that's key. Financing, you work everything around that, right? If you know what, what the numbers look like, then you know what you can build. Um, because yeah, maybe you can build a two bedroom, a three bedroom, but do you have funding? Do you have financing for that? So you wanna start with the financing first, figure out what type of financing you um, have available to you. What I see a lot of sellers, or homeowners wanting to do when they're looking to convert existing space or add additional space is a cash out refi, a HELOC loan. So you can go to your bank or you can go to a direct lender um, and, and figure out what those options are, what their interest rates are, the term, and all of that, right? You can get a construction loan or a renovation loan. And um, I have been talking to a few lenders who are considering an ADU loan where it would finance the property and finance the project. And that's the one we're all waiting for, especially for buyers, because if this um, really does exist, then what would happen is, let's say you wanted to buy a house for 600,000 and the cost to build a uh, two bedroom, one bath or a one one is gonna be 150. Then you're getting financing for the full project, which would be 750, 600 plus the 150. And, and right now there isn't a program that offers that. I mean, you've got construction loans, but for somebody who's gonna buy their primary residence, three and a half percent down, that, you know, there, there isn't financing for that. So uh, with, the, with the homeowners, they do have a lot of options. They got cash out refi, HELOC construction. With the buyers, um, one thing that I have seen is a lot of GCs or, you know, companies that have everything in-house are also funding the project. So they offer financing and it's like a one-stop shop. So that is an option um, as well. And that's one that I've seen a lot. So those are the main things, but you definitely wanna get the financing first because the numbers need to make sense, right? If you're gonna finance a project and the project's 200,000, what is the interest rate? What does your payment look like? If your payment is 1300 and you can only rent it out for 1500, then there's, $200 cash flow. Like, you know, although you're creating equity, it's just not the, the greatest investment. So looking at, you know, location and looking at the, um, the type of finance, financing that you're going to use is ideal. 
And I can help you guys with this. If you guys need help, I do have preferred lenders that I work with. Um, I think Armando is here too at houseable.com and he um, with houseable.com. And they also offer financing and pretty cool stuff. You guys got to check them out. And um, I'm, I'm going to pretty much wrap up in 10, 15 minutes and then leave it open for discussion, you know, and, and um, see how we can all collaborate and connect and help one another. This was a very, very basic, you know, overview of what an ADU is. The next part of this webinar is going to be running numbers, right? And we're going to talk about what you would buy it for, what it would rent for, what your payment is, and the whole nine yards when it comes to numbers. We'll definitely dive deep into that. But for this time, I just kind of wanted to give you guys an overview and a very basic understanding, you know, of what to, how, how, to, how to identify these ADU potential properties. So things to consider. And again, going back to what I've seen, um, I think that you should definitely, aside from the financial portion and figuring out what type of finance you're going to be using, you want to check and verify everything that I just told you. Check your local and statewide ordinances to verify all this information. Okay. Things that you want to look out for. Parking. If you're in, let's say, a historic district, certain types of, you know, zoning will require for parking. For the most part, not so much, but I will say that it's a plus, right? Because as a tenant, think about it. If you had parking, could you charge a premium or could you give that tenant a better experience to, to want to rent your unit, right? And take care of it. Um, you want to look at your fire zones, coastal zones. You want to definitely verify with your HOA if this is a townhome. Um, you want to... And, and, and the other things are things that I've just made note of, you know, as I'm going to these ADU appointments, um, verifying whether it's septic or, you know, just regular traditional sewer. Um, alley access, that's a big one because, you know, a lot of costs come with you not having that sewer access right away. And um, I find that alley, you know, when you're looking at a property, try to identify something that has alley access, that is a corner lot possibly, or if it is, you know, on a nice track, does it have alley access? Can you kind of split the property into two? You know, you start visualizing these homes and get creative with the space. Utilities, just like I had mentioned earlier, utilities sometimes play a big part. If you want to, you know, split that water, uh, that's going to be a costly bill. So do you want to do that, you know, or do you want to just keep it all in one bill and kind of, you know, add that to your, to your rental agreement or add it to your rental amount. That's kind of what I've told clients. Like if you, your water bill is, I don't know, 200 bucks, you know, maybe you can split that amongst the tenants and have them offset that unless you want to spend, you know, between 15 and 20,000 to, to divide that water. Um, solar panels. And I'm glad that Jeffrey is here because if you guys want to connect with him, he does this for a living. That's, that's what he dedicates his time to. And I know that for new construction, you will be required to have those solar panels. And that's a very important one. That's for, that this goes for ground up construction. So if you're looking to build a detached ADU ground up, you're going to need those solar panels. And they can range between, you know, 10, 15,000, possibly even more. It really just depends. And these are things that you want to add to your budget cost, right? Power pole. Um, I've had clients who want to build on top of their garage or they want to build a two-story ADU, but the pole, so literally the power pole where it's sitting, is, is, won't allow them to build that high, right? They've got to keep a certain, a certain uh, density and clearance from that pole. So then um, that's, that's a big one, because if you want to call that, that power company to switch that pole, that's another cost that most people don't want to go through, because you know, you're, you're, um, you're already spending you know, 150, let's say you want to add the solar panels, that's another 10, and then you want to switch the, the pole, and then you want to switch the water, like all these things can add up fairly quickly. So you want to look at these things while you're, you're on the hunt, you know, for your home search, or when you're considering to invest, whatever the case may be. And then lastly, um, vet everybody that you decide to work with. I got into this, um, to this a ADU space because I saw one, the lack of training and education amongst realtors. We don't know what we don't know. And there isn't any, there isn't an ADU school, right? This is a very new concept, but it's a very um, powerful one. 
And so I decided to take on that challenge to educate myself, connect with people within the field. And with that came a lot of learning lessons. You know, not everybody that says they know their stuff actually are doing it or know it. So you really have to vet people. You got to vet your contractors. You have to vet your architects. You have to vet your designers. You have to vet everybody that you decide to work with, including your realtor, whoever's part of your team. So, um, you know, in closing, part of that team that you need to work with is your lender, your architect or designer, your GC, your, um, your, your family and spouse. To be honest, that matters too, right? Who's in your ear and, can, and are they supporting your vision and what you're trying to do? Because this um, strategy works. It's just a matter of running these numbers so that it makes sense for you and what your risk tolerance is. And so one of the things I've also been emphasizing on with my team, which is Steph, Maria, and Rosie, is one is FIRE. And the FIRE acronym stands for Financial Position Investment Strategy, um, Risk Tolerance, Experience, and Education, right? And so sometimes it's, if you want to do this on your own, that's totally fine, but make sure that you have the knowledge or you have a great team that knows what they're doing, you know, before you jump on this venture. And um, I'm here to answer any questions that you guys may have. Um, you know, if you guys took anything from today, feel free to drop um, a review on my Google. And a lot of what I talked about today has been shared on my Instagram. You know, I talked about the different types of strategies, how people are using ADUs. Um, I recently had, hold on, I'm going to admit L. I recently had um, a few ADU podcasts where my clients is finishing up her ADU. And, um, and yeah, I mean, a lot of cool stuff. I love to share the process. I recently sold another one and they're looking to build an ADU. Like I said, once you see the strategy and the potential, you're never going to go back, right? Now you're looking at properties left and right um, and figuring out what the highest and best use is by implementing the ADU strategy. And so um, I've also added a few resources here, um, Long Beach, ADU Ordinance, Riverside, and um, San Diego. And there's a couple more that I have in my notes here. And like I said, I'm recording this. So I'm going to email it out to everybody who couldn't make it today. Uh, but I want to thank you guys once again. And now I'm going to leave it open to discussion for the next 15, 20 minutes. I want to get you guys out of here by 530 because I know everybody's busy with their time. And I appreciate you guys even joining, you know, for as long as you guys have. So any questions so far? And feel free to um, to put your IG in the chat room and, um, you know, tag one another and connect, collaborate. I think that a lot of us can help each other out. Brady, you have a question? Yeah, I had one question. I think this is perfect for me, too, because I, as an investor, sometimes come across properties or from wholesalers, and they're always saying, oh, great ADU potential, but just there's no comps in that area, right? Because ADUs, although it's sometimes we always talk about, it's not mm -hmm. always there, right? So when there's no ADU comps, you as a real estate agent, um, how do you kind of go based off of that? Like, is it even worth it at some times, or how do you kind of go based off of that? If there aren't any comps, um, then what I do is I'll look for closest thing to that right you know uh, what an appraiser is going to look at is anything within half a mile within the last 30 to six months 30 days to six months um if they can't find anything within the last 30 days then it'll be within the last six months but let's say you're trying to comp out a 2-1 right and hold on i'll give it to you right now yes i'll look for it right now and i'll give it to you i think it's right here sorry guys um so if you're looking to comp out, let's say a 2-1 and you can't find any, then let's go with a 3-1, right? Or let's look for something similar in square footage, similar in lot size, similar in condition. And that's kind of how I get a good gauge if there aren't enough comps. But for the most part, I mean, you can get a good gauge just based on square footage, right? If you're looking to comp out a one, something that's a thousand square feet and you can't find anything, I would look for something uh, for 1,500 square feet or X amount of square footage that you're looking to add. If I'm looking to add another 500 square feet, then compare it to 1,500 square foot homes. And if you can't find bedroom, bathroom comps. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. It's kind of what I was doing, um, but just kind of wanted to get your insight as far as like what you've done or what you've seen. So thank you. What you could do too is um, with Armando, again, going back to Armando, houseable.com. If you go to my Instagram and you click on the first link, you click the link in my bio and you go to the first option, which is ADU options. That's a houseable website. You can type in the address there. You type in your email and it'll give you a generated report of what other other um, ADUs are, are being built for in that area. So that you get a good gauge as far as what other people are paying for as far as the ADU goes. So you won't get a comp necessarily on sales, but you get a comp on what other people are paying for. And, and you kind of add that, you know, to the comp itself. That, that's how I get a good gauge on what the appreciation would be. And you're right. Sometimes as investors, you really want to spot out that location because let's say I'm looking to buy and I, and I see a good investment property in Compton or North Long Beach, right? Because of the location, no matter how much you add to it, you, you can only get so much for value. So, um, and I've had this conversation with Sydney, one of our appraiser friends where, yes, depending on location, they will take um, a, you know, a significant amount into consideration. But, you know, in some, you're, you're going to be capped out as to how much you can get. So you want to get, you know, just connect with somebody who really knows what they're doing. If you have a realtor as part of your team, you guys should be looking at all of that. You know, um, sec it's a lot of speculation, but, you know, it, it, it still works if, if you do it the right way. And if you focus on a good location, that's up and coming. Solid. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Thank you, guys. This was awesome. I had a lot of fun. Um, and before we finish up here, um, Andrew, yes, Andrew, you're awesome. I, I think I saw a scenario where you had talked about um, maybe someone doing a junior ADU and an ADU. Um, is it, uh, did they have as an investor or the buyer themselves? Did they have to, and did they have any issue signing a a covenant that they had to own or occupy the building or one of the units? So um, with with Stephanie, we're not there yet as far as we've, you know, as far as that goes, but she didn't buy it with that intention. Her intention was to actually um, buy it for her and her family. But now that she's looking to move to Lakewood, that's when she started looking at the property differently. And she said, okay, well, let me convert the garage. Let me convert the, the master bedroom and bathroom into a junior ADU. And right now we've um, submitted the plans, but I think we're still, we're still waiting for the approval. So I'll keep you guys posted on that for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. And um, let's see, Rosie, you have a question? Or Armando, go ahead. Did you want to answer that? Uh, yeah, well, to follow up with uh, Andrew's question. Um, yeah, right now, like there, I mean, the, the city isn't really going out and double checking and, and doing that. Um, but um, but yeah, they, they can at any time and uh, they could always uh, require you to fill, fill out some paperwork um, saying that you are gonna be uh, on the property uh, if you're building the junior ADU. So it varies between uh, city to city. Which she is gonna live there, you know, for the time being until she gets it reappraised. So she has to wait for the build out either way. She can't really make any moves until, um, you know, the build out's done and then we see how that is, but she's, she's not looking to move out anytime soon. Um, it's still going to be her primary, but she's preparing for the future, right? A year, two years, whatever the case may be. But thank you, Armando. Andrew and Armando, you guys need to connect. You guys are ADU gurus, just like me, ADU nerds, you know, and geeks. So you guys definitely got to connect. Rosie, your question. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> Hi, Stephanie. Uh, well, actually, this is a question from my husband because he's li listening to the whole webinar. And his question is that once, w you know, how you mentioned that each unit that you build could have its own meter, like its power and water and power meter. Um, how does that align with the address? Or, and if we decide not to get a meter, do they still get an address uh, on its own, like their, its own? physical address how does that work with the city or 
or, or whatever department that goes to. Got it. Andrew or Armando, you guys want to take that one? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Rosie, you want to ask your question one more time? Um, yeah. yeah, the question is, um, as far as once you build the ADU, uh, you mentioned that each you each additional unit has its could have its own meter as far as like the water meter and, and the power meter. Um, how does that connect with the physical address? I know you mentioned that they come with its own address um, number. How does that uh, and if we decide not to add the, the, the power or, or the water meter, <clears throat> um, how does the, the address get into align with the meters? The, I, I feel like, do you get me? <laughs> yeah. Andrew, you wanna give it a shot? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so the addressing is, is a little bit separate. Your addressing is gonna be assigned uh, whether or not you were able, you decide to get separate meters or not. Um, typically, the uh, addressing department will assign it to you. You sometimes have some say in it. Maybe it's a unit A or five, five, five and a half or five, five, seven, how they usually divide it up. Um, if you do end up using the main water meter, that bill goes to whoever it's assigned to, and you'd have to set up a agreement with whoever your tenant is on a reimbursement or a way to bill it. There is um, a technology out there that will tell you how much water that tenant uses and it'll give you an idea of how much to bill them back. Um, it's the same thing with electricity. If you decide to connect it with the house meter, um, it would be the same thing, either just one owner, whoever whoever's assigned to the bill is paying for it. Um, and then you get it reimbursed back by your tenant is how typical uh, investors or owners handle that situation. Um, if you do get individual water, individual meter, then whoever has that service will be the one who's registered to the bill and then we'll pay for it that way. Gotcha, yep. thank you so much. No, thank you, Rosie, and thank you, Andrew. Um, you guys, I'm gonna be recording a podcast with Andrew because what, what I just talked about on a very basic level, he does in the multifamily space. So he does ADU times 10. He 10x is everything. <laughs> so um, I'm curious to see what those numbers will look like. And I can't wait to do that podcast with him because we're just out here trying to create awareness, you know, and, and I feel like, especially in our community, it's just lack of knowledge. People don't know what they don't know. They don't know they can build. They don't know they can convert. They don't want to go to the city because they think the city's there as an enemy. And the city is not there as an enemy. If anything, we're paying these people to have a job. So if you go to the city, right, if you really, your biggest takeaway from today, if you really don't want to do any of this, go to the city first, go talk to, you know, your local people and have them walk you through the process and they'll do it, you know, and, and the ordinances and the rules and regulations are there for us to, it's almost like a roadmap of what you can and can't do, but it doesn't mean that you can't do anything. And I think for us, it was just that stigma where I came from. You know, my dad always would build, but without permits, because he was just like freaking out, you know, that it would be a much higher cost or, you know, a lot of these myths that we think come into play. Um, but they're all myths at the end of the day. If you um, educate yourself, then, you know, the sky is the limit. There's a lot of opportunity. And for the realtors that are listening here, um, you know, implement the strategy when you're talking to your clients, create the opportunity, create the sell, create the vision. Um, they don't know. They're coming to us as experts, right? They think that if they're coming to buy a house or sell their house, they're looking to maximize their opportunity. They don't know how to do that uh, unless we guide them through it because, you know, they don't know what they don't know. So this is just another way to be of more value to everybody that you decide to work with. Al, did you want to say something? I think he's all right guys well do you guys have any other questions i had one last comment i guess it would be um i recently did one in norwalk on adu and a remodel and believe it or not the to get your plans approved when you take them in yourself it's actually a lot easier than people think 
um, as like the homeowner. Uh, it's funny, like they let me take out the plans as a homeowner, but not as, um, or for the ADU, but to do, let's say the electrical to a regular house, they need a licensed electrician. So cities kind of like vary, but for the most part, it's pretty easy for you to, after you get your plans from your architect to go in and submit them yourself so, or get the permits. Permits and plans are different, but um, the permits are pretty easy to pull as an owner for ADUs. Um, but for our models, they're, they ask for a little bit more stuff. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there, it's really not that complicated, but people really think that it is. And so the purpose of today's webinar was just to kind of create the awareness, right? This is part one of the equation. We're just putting it out there. I think that after today, um, you guys should be able to see the properties in a different way from an ADU perspective connect with one another. We've got people who do solar panel. We've got people that are in the multifamily space. I mean, you guys can take this strategy and apply it to a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex. Now, it can get more complicated. You want to definitely, you know, educate yourself, but you just start looking at things differently. You really do. And that's one way to help this um, housing shortage, you know, that we're in. And so for the next ADU webinar that I'll have next month, like I said, we'll really dive deep into numbers. Um, and I'll work on a case study. I'm going to connect with Armando and Andrew and and um, and Al, and we'll work on some some numbers. And I'm curious to talk to Jeffrey too, because now that you know these solar panels are needed for new construction, uh, we want to connect with somebody who knows what they're doing in the solar panel space. So, thank you guys once again. Any final thoughts or questions, or you know, I think. If you guys, for those of you who have a few extra minutes to hang out, you guys want to introduce yourselves and give a closing thought just so we make the warm intro amongst each other and um, share your Instagram on here. Feel free to tag me as well. I don't bite, I swear. All right, guys. You guys are a little quiet, falling asleep on me. But the cool thing is I'm recording this. So I'm going to send it out to everybody. And again, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. I will see you guys next month. I'm going to be having a webinar each week. The first week of the month is for ADUs. Second week of the month is for buyers. Third week of the month is for sellers. And fourth week of the month is for all new realtors who are looking to make a change and maybe want to join EXP. I'll help you guys scale the business. I've literally, like I said, I've been a receptionist all the way up to now a team leader and now tap into the ADU space. So I'm here to help because I see the, the need for it, you know. So thank you guys once again. Have a good night. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. I'll leave you can't open just a couple minutes. So you guys thank you so much. are catching up with the notes and I think I'll lose the notes, right? Armando, if I close it out, I might lose the chat. Uh, no, I think you're... Does yeah, no, I think you'll be fine. Okay. All right, I'll send them to you. I have them. All right, cool. So Giselle connected her IG. Thank you for doing that. Maria, Andrew, Seth, Rosie, Armando, Brady, Gwen, Jeffrey. And yeah, that's everybody. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, thank you guys. Mm -hmm.